I have been struggling with this mysterious head pressure pain that has eluded every doctor, scan, MRI, CT, you name it. I, I don't want to be a mystery anymore. You got a question for me? Yes, um, I would love it if you could scan my big sister, Jennifer. Uh, she's yeah. near and dear to my heart and she's been having some medical challenges most, most recently in the past couple of months. Oh my gosh, I'm like buzzing and I can't sit still because I'm so excited to be talking with you. Hi everybody, welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm so delighted you could join us this week. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all over the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. We've got some callers on hold, so we'll get to them in just a second. Hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Tim and I went to Columbus, Ohio, and we were with the Ryan clan for Thanksgiving, which was really fun and got to see several friends up there and was busy, Went did a, did a lot of things in a few days, but we had a ball. Interestingly enough, my great nephew, Jack, who is five, really looks like my son, Jonathan, at that age. And when he walked in the door on Thanksgiving afternoon, my heart skipped a beat. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is like my child you know, back in time coming in. And and I, I thought that was remarkable. I've seen pictures of him where he looks like Jonathan, uh, but oh my goodness, it was amazing. Have you ever had something like that happen? I, write, write me a note in the comments about that, but I it, it really, my heart skipped a beat. And it, when I gave him a hug, it was like, holy Moses. So we had a lot of fun. One thing that I got to do was I went to the cemetery and my brother Jay had put wreaths on a lot of our family members' graves and couldn't find my Mima's grave. And so I got one for her and one for my grandma Ryan and granddad Ryan. And then my Mima's mother, her name's Anna. She was in an unmarked grave for 70 years. And we found out about it when my sister-in-law was doing some genealogy work. And she realized that she was in the same cemetery with all five generations of the rest of the Ryan family. And so my brothers and I put a, a, a marker on her grave and I got to see it for the first time and left a wreath for her too. So that was really a remarkable event for me. You know, spirit doesn't care about that stuff. That's what they tell me that they're in heaven, everything's great, but the markers are for the humans that are left behind. And and even though we never knew her, we just felt like that was the the right thing to do. So I got to see her marker in place too. A couple of housekeeping things. Remember to leave a review on the show. Subscribe, share, leave a review, especially leave a review this week because I'm going to do a drawing next Thursday for a free session. You know, I do that on the first Thursday of the month when we record and Whoever is the winner, we take it off of reviews, wherever you listen to podcasts and also on YouTube. And then we choose one and that person is a lucky winner and uh, gets a free session with me valued at $250. So it would be a great gift for you or a great gift for someone you love if you want to re-gift it. So there's that. The other thing, speaking of gifts, my... Angels and Enlightenment Training, which is an online class, it takes a couple of hours to go through it. And then there are live practice sessions with graduates of my big angelic attendant training, and they are the facilitators. That is a wonderful gift to give to somebody. It's also a wonderful gift to ask for. And if you go to AskJulieRyan.com training, and in the checkout, you use Julie 50, you'll get $50 off on it. So you want to consider that as something that you put on your gift list of what you'd like, and then also to give it to others who are interested in 
communicating perhaps with deceased loved ones. I interviewed a gal named Dr. Lorraine Matthew, who's going to be on the show. We'll, we'll release it in a few weeks. And she's done research that shows that when we connect telepathically with our deceased loved ones, that's the best way to heal grief. And certainly the Helping Parents Heal organization has learned that too, because they just have thousands of members around the world who's, who've lost a child, regardless of if that child's newborn or if the child's 75 and the parents are 95, doesn't matter. It's still a child. So being able to communicate with deceased loved ones is really, really a skill that we all possess. It's just a matter of developing it and then enhancing it and then trusting the information you get. And so that's what you get in the class. So I wanted to remind you all about that too. Okay, let's go to the phones and let's see who we've got on tonight. Hi, Patty. Looks like Patty's our first caller. Hi, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Please tell everybody where you're located. I'm calling from Queens, New York. The reason I'm calling is because two weeks ago, I developed um, like a cold. And then the next day, um, a nun that comes to my house to give my mother communion calls me to say she's sick. And the first thing I thought of, oh, oh, uh, do I have COVID? Next day I got tested um, because in New York City, we have Department of Health, we, there's four locations. One of them I could go to that gets, to, I get tested for RSV, flu A, flu B, and COVID, and I was negative. And then, but I was still having runny nose. I said, okay, I just have a cold. And then I went the following Sunday to urgent care. They says, oh, you're fine, you just have rhinovirus. And then the day after Thanksgiving, I develop a cough. And I said, okay, I had a cold. Maybe that's part of it. And then Saturday, I said, okay, I'm going to go Sunday to urgent care to see why I'm having this. I just went on the Sunday before, and it's just a rhinovirus. And thank God I went on Saturday. He says, you have bronchitis, but we don't know if you have pneumonia because we don't, we don't have a test. Where I go to in New York City called City MD. I was told there's a shortage of x-ray technicians. And the one that I went to in my neighborhood doesn't have a technician every day. So, and the doctor said, even if it is pneumonia, it's the same thing, bronchitis or pneumonia, you have to take antibiotics. And I took my bike and I went all the way to a local Rite Aid because there was a Rite Aid near my home that closed um, because Rite Aid, they closed in some stores, so they closed in one in my neighborhood. I went to take my bike and I went to get my medicine and I've been taking my medicine since Saturday night, one morning and night, every 12 hours. Now, my question is, um, in my lungs, did I have pneumonia? Because my oxygen level was fine. I did not have a fever. So, and I can ride my bike. So, and I don't feel tired. So, maybe I did have just a cold. I turned into bronchitis. I, I was scanning you while you were telling me what was going on, telling all of us what was going on. Patty, I do get that you did have pneumonia. I get it was viral pneumonia, though. It wasn't bacterial pneumonia. Oh, or if okay. it was bacterial pneumonia, it's gone. Because when I see a bacterial infection, I'll see antibiotic energy, which is a kind of a fuchsia color, more purple than pink. And mm -hmm. I don't see that. I do see remnants of a viral infection. Viral infections to me look like really watery beef broth. Mm -hmm. And so what I was doing was forcing it out of your system while we were doing, while I was listening to you and then giving you a, you know, a boost of energy just to help you heal. Vitamin C mm -hmm. and zinc is the best thing mm -hmm. you can do. Get the buffered C so it's easier on your tummy. And you want to do a thousand milligrams of buffered C. I like ester mm -hmm. C, but any kind of buffered C. Yeah, I have and, ester C. I do. Okay. I do and then you want, to, you want to add 50 milligrams of zinc to that. And you want to do that up to three times a day. Okay. And that, that you, you know, vitamin C cured polio for heaven's sakes. 
and vitamin yes, C yes. works great. The interesting thing about vitamin C too is what you don't need, your body's gonna get rid of. Either you're gonna pee mm-hmm. it out or you're gonna poop it out. And if you get the runs back off a little bit on the C, mm-hmm. but normally three times a day is good. Let me tell you a quick story about how effective vitamin C is. For me, I learned this myself. 25 years ago, I had LASIK surgery on my eyes so I could see distance. I wore contacts for 20 years and glasses before Mm -hmm. that for seeing distance. So I had the LASIK done. A few years later, maybe five years later, my right eye needed to be redone. And so I went back to the ophthalmologist and he said, do you take a lot of vitamin C? And I said, yes, I do. And he said, well, I don't want you to take it for six months after I redo this eye. And I said, why? And he said, well, when we do LASIK, it causes a scar on the eyeball to form and that changes how the light's refracted. And he said, when you take vitamin C, the body heals so well that the scar doesn't form the way we need it to, to change how the light is refracted so that you can see distance. I thought that was remarkable. Wow. But yeah. what is viral pneumonia compared to bacterial pneumonia? What is what is it? It's just a different source. It's caused by a virus instead of a bacteria. And a lot of the time when you have viral pneumonia, they'll put you on antibiotics because sometimes it'll go into a bacterial infection just because all that crud stays in your lungs mm-hmm. and you're not mm-hmm. getting it out. But your lungs look cloudy to me when I got you on my radar. So what I did was I watched a suction tube go down in each lung Mm -hmm. and just suck out imagine like fog in there is what Mm -hmm. it looked like it looked cloudy and that's how pneumonia shows up on the x-rays when people have it done but i didn't um i only cough saturday uh friday and saturday after i took the antibiotics i'm not coughing anymore that's great just wonderful right yeah good you know i'm just showing how yeah that's from the mother i just um I want to take the x-rays, but like I figure, why should I now? Because I'm on antibiotics, you know, what the doctor says. Got to take antibiotics. And if you feel good, that's all that matters. Yeah, my nose is like actually not clogged up. So it's like now it's getting me worried because because I just turned 60 and it's like, oh, my God. You know, they um, I was told that once you have pneumonia, if you get a cold, they could turn into pneumonia quickly. Yeah. Once you have the... Yeah. Age is not a disease. I learned that from my daughter-in-law, Dr. Mal, the vet. She tells her, her humans, she calls them her, her patients are the animals and the humans are their owners. She says, I tell my humans all the time, age is not a disease. Goes for, goes for us too, people. And, um, eh, nah, you know, don't, don't, uh, just our thoughts create our reality. You're healthy. Your lungs look good. You feel good. You right. feel, I think you're good. Well, that's what I keep thinking because my oxygen level was never b- below normal. Um, and I'm riding my bike, running errands. So right. if I had like pneumonia, I would be in bed, right? Not necessarily, but I think, you know, getting some exercise is good because it helps you clear your right. lungs. Yeah. So I think you did yeah, good. All righty. Well, well, Merry okay. Christmas. Happy holidays. Thank you. You too. And may, okay. may 2024 be a wonderful and blessed year for everybody. I agree. Same to you. Thanks, Patty. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, Vidya. Hi. Hi, Julie. <laughs> How are you, girl? I'm, I am good. I'm very good. I'm really uh, surprised and happy. I, I get to talk to you. I didn't expect this. Oh, my this pleasure. What, Where are you located? Uh, I'm, I'm in LA, California. Okay. What part? Uh, North Hollywood. Okay. Terrific. Yeah. yeah. yeah j- just been here uh, since May. So, um, Anyway, so I have a question about about my thyroid. I have yeah. an enlarged thyroid. I'm 77. I've had it for 45 years, but I'm at a point to I don't know what to 
uh, do about it. I, I like holistic measures as far as healing goes. Um, and I'm just concerned that it might get bigger and I'm not sure how to, um, how to deal with it. Um, I've investigated uh, thyroid ablation and um, talked to someone about thyroid removal, but um, it is functioning. I just would like to get at the cause and how to address it. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you feel? Are you on medicine now for your thyroid? No, I'm not. You're not? No, I'm not. No. Um, no, I don't take any medications at all. And how do you feel? Are you having symptoms? I have had it for so long. I take, I muscle test myself for vitamins and minerals. Mm -hmm. And so I really don't have a doctor that, that really is, is helping me with this. Um, I've just been gathering information for a long time and um, I need to find another doctor here in this area. Mm -hmm. um, I've, mo I've moved in, in, oh, since May and um, about five years ago, I moved from Colorado. So I, I'm kind of in a place where I'm, I've moved like five times <laughs> in the last few years. Uh, it's been, it's been kind of stressful. That oh way. my gosh. I can only imagine. Uh, yeah. Moving period is stressful. Just the thought of it is stressful in my book. So God bless you for all those yes. moves. All right. Let me get you on my radar and let's see what's going on with okay. that. What I'm getting, I get information downloaded into my head when we're talking, Vidya, and what I was hearing was for you to do a consult with Dr. Maria in London via Zoom, and I'll give you, do you have a pen? I'll give you her website. Okay, okay. I'm ready. It's D-R-A-M-A-S-A-N. As in Nancy, T as in Tim, I, dramasanti.com. And we'll put it in the show notes as well. She is an Oxford educated in, uh, general practitioner. She does functional medicine. She does holistic medicine. She's a graduate of my class, so she does energy medicine. We had her on the show, I think it was last month or the month before. I, I want to say episode 416, maybe something around there. But if you look on the list of my shows, if you go on my website, AskJulieRyan.com and look for Dr. Amasanti, you'll see her and you can listen to that interview and see if she resonates with you. But that's the first thing that came into my head is that Dr. Maria can help you. She can't prescribe any surgeries or medicines to you because she's out of the country, but She's really brilliant, and she has she has patients from all over the world with whom she consults. Um, she does consults with them via Zoom. So I know you know how to use Zoom because you're on tonight. <laughs> so so that <laughs> yes yes yeah. <laughs> so how this works, Vidya, is I I raise my vibrational level to the level of spirit. I'm going to watch a laser beam come from my body here in Birmingham, Alabama. It's going to hook into you in North Hollywood. And then I'm going to have a hologram of you in my mind's eye. And we'll see. It's like I'm looking at an X-ray or a CT scan or an MRI. And so something will be identified and then there'll be some kind of healing. Like you heard me with other other callers tonight. You know, there's some kind of a procedure that's done energetically. So I want you to envision it. And everybody that's listening, envision what I'm talking about, too, because it's like a group healing. You get a global healing, not just for me. You get it from everybody that listens to this. And then I'll describe it. And my analogies sometimes are really hilarious. So get prepared. But the okay. thing is that that's just how the images come into my head. And that's to give us a frame of reference from our human perspective. 
So here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama. Heading out to okay, you in North Hollywood. All right, got you. Shooting energy <laughs> feed up through the W head. So you look like you've got a nodule on the left side. I'm looking at you from behind. Your left. Looks like you have a nodule on your thyroid on the left side. Have they found that? Well, there's there's several knowledge, yeah. uh, nodules on both right, right and left and then in the middle. Yeah, I can see them. All right. The one that's the biggest issue is on the left side. So what I'm watching is I'm watching, you know, here come my fun analogies. You know what a cheese slicer looks like where it's just a, a, um, a thin yeah. wire and it's got a handle on it? I see a device like that used a lot in energetic surgery and it's it's a hot wire. So it cuts and cauterizes at the same time. And that's what I'm watching get used that hot wire to get rid of that growth on the left side. And then we'll come around and we'll see the one on the center and on the right. Okay, got that going. Is it in your best interest to have surgery and to have your thyroid removed? So those are big, those look like goiters to me. Is that what they're calling them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, I'm getting it's in your best interest to have surgery on those. Energetically, they've already been removed. So when you have the surgery, the surgery, if you decide to have the surgery, the surgery will um, go very smoothly because it's already happened on the energetic level. So I'm watching that. And now what I'm watching is I'm watching a new thyroid get generated with stem cell energy. So imagine there's a a template or a mold. Think of a jello mold or a plastics mold. And stem cell energy is going in there, Vidya. And then it's a light amber colored gel. It has sparkles in it because it's woo-woo. Got to have sparkles. And it reminds me of Dippity-Doo hair gel. Do you remember that back in the 60s and 70s? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I know. Yes. <laughs> so it's that's filling. And then there's a vortex above it that's spinning. And that's going to regenerate your thyroid. So where we've got, while that's generating, I'm watching all the plumbing into your thyroid get clamped. We're going to remove the diseased thyroid. We're going to put the new one in. So even if you have fears <laughs> removed, energetically, you're going to have one. You'll need to be on medication, but energetically, you'll have one. And sometimes these new organs that get generated with stem cell energy show up on subsequent scans, and it freaks out the doctors. It's really fun when that happens, because sometimes they call me, and they you know, they want to know what's going on. So got that going. Yeah. All right. I, I would still do a consult with Dr. Maria and see what she says. Okay. On it. But I'm but I'm getting it's in your best interest to have it removed. The whole thing yeah. removed. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna re- want to remove the whole thing because they want to take those goiters out. But um, but that doesn't get at the cause, does it? Well, I think that's where Maria can help you with that. I think I see. Yeah, Dr. Maria can reverse engineer your symptoms and help you with that. You got a malabsorption issue, obviously, for the thyroid medication. So I think that's a that's worth discussing before you go down the surgery route. Okay. All right. I hope that helps so much. You are most welcome. Happy holidays. (laughs) Happy holidays to you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. We do this show every Thursday night, unless it's Christmas or or Thanksgiving, like it was last week. And we do it at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. Just go to AskJulieRyanShow.com, and we'll get you right in and get you on the air so that you can ask your question. Uh, I always tell people, it's fast, it's fun, and it's free. And if you've got a question and you want it answered quickly, this is the fastest way to to get to me, and it's fun and it's free. So, you know, trifecta of good things. The information about the show is on my website, AskJulieRyan.com, and in the show notes. 
anywhere you download the show. We're on all the podcast channels. We're on YouTube. We're on Alexa. And remember to share and leave a review and subscribe so that you know when new shows come out. We also post something on Instagram and on Facebook on the day of the show with the call-in information, just as a reminder. And then I release a blog every week on Thursday morning with the call-in information too. So I'm trying to make it easy for you that you can find this and send out lots of reminders that if you are if you got a question, call in. In order to get my blog, just go to AskJulieRyan.com, click on the button that says Get Julie's Blog, and, um, and then you'll be added to list. And we can do that. Uh, when you're on the site, you can schedule an appointment with me. I'm booked out a little bit, but the key is get on my calendar and then you wanna keep your confirmation email, check the reschedule button periodically because people reschedule all the time. And a lot of times you can get in within a matter of days or weeks. So just click on the reschedule button. I talk to people every week who say, I didn't believe you when I heard that on the show, but I here I am and I'm in and I'm in early. So you can do that as well. Let's see what else. Fourth Tuesday of the month, I do Ask Julie Ryan Live. I did it a couple of days ago. It's a blast. It's another way to get your questions answered. We we just everybody's talking and helping each other and we're all doing healings on each other whether you know how to do this stuff or not you just get involved on the ask julie ryan live for december we're going to do it on the third tuesday so we're going to do it on the tuesday before christmas because i'm taking the week off between christmas and new year's so everything that you need is at askjulieryan.com so that's where you can go and find it okay this week, our question comes from, people submit questions online, and you can submit a question online too if you want, and yours may be chosen. This comes from Rachel, and Rachel lives, lives in Greencastle, PA, Pennsylvania. And she says, hi, Julie, can you tell me about my past lives? I need some type of proof to believe in reincarnation. The idea of death terrifies me. Can you help, please? Thanks, Rachel. And here's my response. Hi, Rachel. Past lives are a fascinating topic and one I always enjoy discussing. Over several years, I've had the opportunity to do what I call a past life scan with thousands of clients where I've seen in my mind's eye one of their most significant past lives. How I do past lives is I envision myself in this endless hallway very narrow walls, very tall ceilings. And on the walls are 12 inch by 12 inch mirrors, big square mirrors. And they're lined up perfectly, both vertically and horizontally. And then I'll say, we'll come up with a question like, you know, was I a medical provider in a past life? Was I a healer in a past life? Let's, let's say that. And so all the lives that correlate with that, that are represented in mirrors will come out the, from the wall as if they're on a hydraulic arm. And then I'll say, show me the one that correlates the most. That one will come out the farthest. And then I'll envision walking into the mirror. It's like I'm walking into a scene in a movie. And we'll get where it was, when it was, a year. We'll a lot of times get a name. We'll get information. And then I love it when we can corroborate and validate that information with historic documents online. And that happens a lot. So, and then what we'll do is we'll correlate it with what's going on in your current life. So that's how I do past life scans. During this session, I get, receive as a thought, information such as names, place, year, and details, which can later be validated and corroborated with his dark documents online. Ha, huh, I just said that. Then we figure out how this past life information correlates with what's happening in the person's current life. It's always helpful. As for proof of past lives, many books are available on this topic. Perhaps my favorites are written by Brian Weiss, MD. Dr. Weiss is a highly respected psychiatrist who learned about past lives while hypnotizing a patient. That's the first time he was ever 
exposed to past lives and it, and it really helped the patient heal. So that led him to do a deep dive and he's, he's really been doing it for decades. He's, I think, one of the foremost ex- experts out there on past lives. I went on to say another suggestion is to delve into near-death experiences, also known as NDEs. Raymond Moody, MD, is one of the foremost experts in this field. I recently interviewed Dr. Moody on my show when he shared a lot of enlightening bits of information about NDEs and his research. We just released that show on Thanksgiving. So you can go back and and listen to that. We had a really fun talk. And I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute after I finish with this letter. Lastly, with regard to being afraid of death and proof of an afterlife, please know we're all surrounded by angels and the spirits of deceased loved ones and pets as we're dying. And then when we get to heaven, by the way, everyone goes to heaven. It's all, they're all there waiting for us. My book, Angelic Attendance, What Really Happens As We Transition From This Life Into The Next, details a process I call the 12 phases of transition which is a configuration of how angels and the spirits of deceased loved ones and pets surround us as we're nearing the end of our lives and includes validating stories of families with whom I've worked. In addition, Christopher Kerr, MD, PhD, discusses his university-based research validating what I see from a spiritual perspective in his book, Death is But a Dream. Dr. Kerr and I had an enlightening discussion when I was when he was a guest on my show. All these resources can help satisfy your curiosity about life after death. Please consider scheduling an appointment with me and we'll access your past lives. So that's from Rachel in Greencastle, Pennsylvania. And I thought that was a wonderful question that she had. Speaking of Dr. Moody, he we released the show on Thanksgiving and the day before on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving it was the 60th anniversary of President John F Kennedy's assassination i didn't know that until it was on the news that day two interesting points about that this is how we're led one is i had recorded a reel the previous week and it was a it was about gratitude and i used a quote from President Kennedy in the reel. And I asked my team to release it the day before Thanksgiving, having no clue that that was the 60th anniversary of his death. That was number one. Number two, in the Dr. Moody interview, we talk about President Kennedy and his wife, Jackie Kennedy. And again, I had no idea that this anniversary was happening, but the day less than 24 hours, you know, I mean, it was released very early on Thanksgiving, right there at that 60th anniversary again. So how was I so unaware, but Spirit was leading me to refer to President Kennedy twice on the day of his anniversary, and then on the next day too. I thought that was remarkable. So that's how spirit works. You know, it just leads us in ways that sometimes it can be surprising. So thanks again, Rachel, for submitting that question. If you want to submit a question, good way to get your questions answered, just submit it at AskJulieRyan.com. Hi, Christine. Hi there. How are you, Julie? I'm wonderful. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. I've been better, but I'm good. Oh, where are you? I'm in Denver, Colorado. Okay, terrific. Look at those dimples. You guys that are listening, she has these <laughs> gorgeous dimples. Holy Moses. They are fabulous. My son got one of them. I love my it. son got one of them, but not both. Lo- Isn't that funny? My daughter-in-law, Mallory, only has one too. I don't know. What happens, oh, yeah. what happens with that? Oh, oh. It gets half of I your he gets half of your DNA, I guess. Maybe that's it. <laughs> I don't know. Instead of getting your full DNA with two dimples, he gets half of your DNA with one. Well, you I'll got you got a question for me? Yes. Um, let's see. So I have been struggling with this mysterious head pressure pain hmm. that has eluded every doctor, scan, MRI, CT, you name it. Um, I think I just want to be able to help 
find the source sure. of, is it a circulation issue? Is it a, a structural issue of, um, I, I don't want to be a mystery anymore. I, I just want to feel better. <laughs> I just want to feel better. Are you in pain all the time or is it just kind of come and go or what? It happens when I sit. So right now I have it. Like it's almost like directly behind my nose mm. and dra- directly down in the middle of my brain. So it, I can't I have to sleep upright. So it's significantly worse if I lay flat and if I sit for long periods of time, it gets worse. Interesting. And and what kind of doctors have you been to see about it? It sounds like it's vascular to me, but um, have you been to... Have but have doctors talked about that? Have they checked out your vascular system? We'll roto rooter your vascular system if need be. But what do you? What are your doctors saying? Um, I've been in neurology and ENT mm-hmm. and primary care, acupuncture, chiropractic practitioners, but no vascular. Okay. No one's even really. They did. They actually did uh, look at my jugular vein yesterday. Okay. No, two days ago, just to see if there was a flow problem, but that no vascular doctors. Okay. So they checked your carotid arteries too in your neck? They did. I think they were focusing mainly on jugular vein, but I think they looked at carotid too. Okay. All right. Let, sure. me get, let me get you on my radar. We'll see what's going on. I'm just going to go in on a general scan. Christine, what happens is I just start at the bottom and the energy is going to go where it's most needed first. And then there'll be some type of a healing that I'll describe to you. And I may tell you your elbow looks like whipped cream or something crazy, but that's just how the images come into my head. <laughs> so I always like to prepare people, though. Spirit has a great sense Prepared of Prepared and ready. Okay, you're ready. Ready, Freddie. Here we go. Here comes my laser beam from sweet old Alabama. Heading out to Colorado. All right, got you. Shooting energy from your feet up to the top of your head. Okay, I'm... Um, going. You're, the image of you in my mind's eye was turned around to the back. You were, I was facing you. And then the, the hologram of you in my mind's eye was turned around to the back. I'm getting the back of the neck. And I, when you were talking, I, when I'm chit-chatting with you or with anybody, I'm already starting to get information downloaded into my head. And I was asking in my, you know, in my head telepathic, I was asking spirit, is it an AVM? Is it an arterial venal malformation? I got to know on that. That would have shown up on your, on your scans that the doctors have done. So I don't get that, but I get that there's the, where your, the blood flow comes down on the bottom of your neck. When it's going in your neck up to your head, there's some kind of congestion there that's going on. So let's roto rooter your vascular system. How about that? So, yep, here, here we go. Imagine that the vascular system, Christine, looks like a network of tubing. And I always picture aquarium tubing. You know that clear aquarium tubing? And sometimes in aquariums, you can see that the tubing either needs to be changed out or at least needs to be irrigated. Because oftentimes it just gets gunk in it. Now it gets uneaten fish flakes, fish poop, minerals from the water, whatever. And so we need to clean it out. Well, that's the same thing with the body. It get the vascular system and the neurological system too can get this. It just gets gunk in it. So what I'm watching is a bunch of little corkscrews that are going through your vascular system and they're spinning really fast and they're morselating or grinding up any kind of gunk that's inside your vascular system. Did you ever remember the game Pac-Man? Yes. Yeah. Loved okay. It. You know, the kids just think they got the corner on the video games, but we were playing Pac-Man back in the 70s, exactly. right? And Dad. and Pac-Man, to those of you that don't know, it was these little circular men and they would eat these dots and then they would multiply. And they'd be all over the screen then and they'd be eating all these dots. And so that's what it reminds me of, Christine. Think of all of these corkscrews that are spinning and they're multiplying and they're just doing that through your whole system. Right. They're down to about your shoulders right now. And every right. part of your vascular system, your cardiovascular, your regular vascular, you know, your neck, your legs, the whole nine yards. 
All right, down to your waist. And then it'll go south. And then what we're going to do is we're going to irrigate any kind of that debris that's been been uh, ground up out. Okay, it's down to your calves. We're almost done. So hang in there for a second. All right, it's turn the corner on the top of your feet. All right, done. So here comes the irrigation fluid from the top of your head. Imagine that it's washing out any kind of debris that's been ground up. And imagine that it's coming out the end of toes. So picture your feet looking like sprinklers. That's what happens there. And then here comes the stem cell energy. So you're going to be like a bionic babe by the time we're done with you. <laughs> here comes <laughs> stem cell energy, light amber colored gel, sparkles, dippity do, consistency. And that's coming in and it's going through your whole vascular system. There's a vortex above your head, beneath your feet, on either side of you, front and behind, all spinning concurrently. And that centrifugal force, Christine, is what regenerates your vascular system. And my analogy for this, and this is what I believe I'm watching in these healings, is if you go back to your grade school science lessons, we learned that every cell has a nucleus and every nucleus is surrounded by cytoplasm which is a watery gel like dippity do, mm -hmm. And our bodies have a centrifugal force in them that causes a, you know, a spinning, basically. And what that does is that allows the body to replicate and divide cells to the tune of billions of them a day. So in these healings from spirit, what I believe I'm watching, Christine, is what our bodies do naturally. I'm just watching it in warp speed. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the vortices are still spinning. Let's give them another few seconds here till they finish. And then I'll shoot energy through you one last time and you'll be, your family may need to wear sunglasses around you tonight because you'll be so brilliant. You'll look like a supernova. All right. Okay. They're starting to slow down. Okay. I'm shooting energy from your feet up through the top of your head. You're lit up like the North Star. So you're, hopefully that will help. I, I get that this is a vascular thing. I also would do a consult with Dr. Maria. Okay. D-R, D-R, A-M-A-S-A-N-T-I. She's okay. so good at reverse engineering symptoms. And I love the fact that she's in London. She can't prescribe medicine Medicines. and she can't. You know, and she's not going to want to, she's not going to do surgery on you because she can't. She's not a surgeon anyways, but I think it it's really wonderful to have somebody that we trust. And I, everybody I send to her loves her and has gotten better, uh, which is why I recommend her all the time. But when you go to a surgeon, that's what they do. They operate, right? And the traditional doctors, God bless them, they're taught to give medicine for symptoms, not to not to reverse engineer and the symptoms to figure out what the cause is. So that's my yes. suggestion. I hope Thank that you. helps. Thank You're you. You're so I welcome. Appreciate you. You bet. Hi, Emily. Hi, Julie. How are you, my girl? You look like an angel with that backdrop. Everybody that's listening, they can't <laughs> see her. She's got like these little tiny looks like strands of Christmas lights behind her. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, that's my vibe. Yeah, <laughs> my bedroom. Very ethereal. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm like buzzing and I can't sit still because I'm so excited to be talking with you. <laughs> I've been um, just listening to your show and, and have called in several times as well. And this is my first time to talk to you and I'm really thrilled. So oh, thank you. Me too. <laughs> you bet. Where are you located? I'm in Portland, Maine. Oh, terrific. Well, you're, yeah. that, that white background with the lights, it looks like that sometimes when you guys get 50 feet of snow up there. <laughs> I know, I yeah. know. We don't have anything yet, but it's cold. Oh, it's really cold. Well, just in time for the holidays. When I first moved to yeah. L when I first moved to LA, Emily, 
and I was in my mid 20s and I was driving around during the holidays. I went back to Columbus for Christmas itself, but you know, the Christmas season and I'm in, I'm driving around the city and they got palm trees and it's 75. I'm going, you guys are pretending it's Christmas. It's, this isn't really Christmas. <laughs> this is like, you guys have it. You're pretending. It was hysterical. I had to yeah. get used to it. So anyways, well, you got a question for me? I do. I do. Um, I have many questions. I know I need to book a session with you. So I'm trying to 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 hone in on my priority here. Okay. Um, but for a long time, I've really been wanting to ask you um, if you could scan and, and look into what's going on with my husband and he um he agrees he's here in the house in another room okay perfect <laughs> um, it's his first name yeah his name's ryan oh he must be way cool yeah <laughs> um so uh the quick version is that um you know after suffering from a lot of allergic symptoms for decades. We finally um, went to a naturopath who specializes in Lyme and autoimmune and um, really cool guy. And he does a very detailed blood test to look into kind of the whole constellation of food allergies, environmental allergies. Um, he does something similar to um, your biome test, mm -hmm. the gut test, um, to really hone in on, on, you know, what foods to, um, our red zone, what foods, you, you know, are of sensitivity, et cetera. So it, we found out that he has major allergies to wheat, corn, dairy, and eggs. Mm -hmm. Um, and then a lot of sensitivities to other foods. Uh, so for the past year, he's actually been very diligent about, his diet. Um, and it's been a journey of, you know, trying to create meals and snacks to keep him going. Um, and, you know, he initially saw an incredible, um, improvement, um, but then started to have a lot of hive breakouts, mm -hmm. still have periods. He carries an EpiPen now because of wheeziness. Um, and just kind of gets nailed with these sort of like outbreaks out of, you know, it feels like out of nowhere. And so the next step with our naturopath is to look into, you know, does he need chelation? Does he have a, a metal sensitivity? He's a musician and he's playing guitar strings and frets, et cetera, all the time. Um you know, I, after having listened to your show, I'm starting to think about things like mold exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's what I'm getting to. Mm -hmm. So I just, I thought maybe, you know, you might want to scan and see, might be able to scan and see what you're seeing. And, and, you know, and I didn't know if there's an energetic component to it or if it's really, you know, something environmental or, or that we can, you know, eliminate or, or something else going on. Okay. Well, let me get them on my radar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to you and from you to Ryan. And then I'll, I'll okay. ask his permission. I know he gave it to you, but I need to hear it in my head. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask his permission and then I'll, I'll scan him and see what's going on. I am okay. getting mold com coming into my head. As I mentioned, while we're chit-chatting, I'm already starting to get what I call divine downloads into my head of things for me to mm -hmm. check. And then the other thing is, is he in a band? Emily, what is, you said he's a musician um, or does he just work? Is he, he a composer? What's he doing with that? He's a producer and an engineer and we run a, we run a recording studio and he, so he's there working with clients. He plays, you know, in every instrument. Um, so he writes music um, and then he also does perform. So, okay. yeah. The, the thing that I was getting was he has a lot of EMF exposures. And if he's playing in a recording studio, there's a ton of EMFs in there. So he's going to need to do some things to ground. Do you guys do that now? Are you okay. aware of that? Of um, I am a little bit just in terms of like charging with bare feet and things like that yeah. into the earth, but I don't know anything beyond that. Yeah, uh, you, you can... 
go on Amazon and look up grounding pads. And there are pads there okay. that you can, like if you're working on the computer, just have your bare feet on the pad while you're on the computer and that can help ground. There are also sheets that you can ground, that you can use to ground. And there are, are devices that you can put in the bed. That's what I use. I'm, I'm being grounded for eight hours every night because it's the easiest time for me to okay. do it when I'm asleep. And so that works in the bed. There's lots of devices. If you just, Amazon's got tons of them. Just look on Amazon and they'll be able to help you. But okay. here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home Alabama heading up to you in Maine. All right, got you, got Ryan. Ryan, I'm talking to your bride. He goes, I know, it's fine. <laughs> okay, good. All right, <laughs> let me go. I'm sh he's He's got mold exposure. Where's the mold? Okay. Is it in your home? Is it in your... Your recording studio, is your recording studio in your home? No, it's not. Okay. It's in a, it's in a, another facility. Okay. Um, but I don't, we don't know. We don't have a, we don't, we're not sure where it would be coming from, but we rent this house. Okay. And it's got wall to wall carpets and they get dank, you know, so maybe. I think that's what's going on. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm removing the mold from his body. He's got some pretty good mold exposure. It reminds me of, you know, those sheets of moss that you can get at Michael's craft store and places like that. Sometimes you'll mm -hmm. see them wrapped around yeah. orchids or, or wrapped around other plants in a house or something decorative from a decorative perspective. So I'm getting that removed. When I see that, sometimes I'll just see splotches of mold. He's got solid mold in his energy field. Oh, gosh. The, there, there are 30% of the population is super allergic to mold. So you could have no symptoms and he's got symptoms. It's the reverse with Tim, my husband and I. I am, I'm like Ryan, maybe mm -hmm. it's the Ryan thing, but I'm like, your, <laughs> I'm like your Ryan. I can walk in a room, I can tell him nanosecond if there's a mold problem, I'm out of there because I'm so highly allergic to it. My husband is oblivious. He says, I don't smell anything. I don't see anything. I'm like, great, honey. I'm going to wait for you in the car. Enjoy yourself. I'm not going to be in there. So mm -hmm. that often occurs where there can be several people living in a home and only one person is affected. By the way, Lyme diagnoses are most of the time, like 99% of the time, there's a mold component even if there is a tick bite, mm. there's always mold exposure most of the time. And most of the time, that's the missing link. So uh, there are some tests that you could do in your home to see what's going on. The fact that your carpet mm -hmm. smells like that, I think that's your answer right there. Can Do you mm -hmm. know, is it an older home? Do you have hardwoods underneath? What's underneath? Do you know? Not sure. It's like an 80s style split ranch. Um, okay. So, you know, not super, super old, but I don't, I'm not sure. I'll have to talk to my landlord and find out what, yeah. you know, what's going on. Yeah. If you decide to do that, if you decide to take the carpeting up, make sure he's not in the mm -hmm. house because it's going to release okay. all those mold spores and that will just get him, you know, really wound up. Again, Dr. Maria. I would work with Dr. Maria, do a consult with her. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm as I'm stitching up his leaky gut right now. Does he have GI issues, Emily? Yes. Yeah, yeah. he does. Yeah. He does. So yeah. gas, bloating, itchy rear end, brain fog, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That all, yep. all goes hand in hand with mold exposure. That's yeast overgrowth. So mm -hmm. low on the food chain. He's already doing this, it sounds like with what he's eating, yeah. I would get him some nice statin, get the doctor to prescribe a, a um, dose of nice statin. He probably is going to need to stay on it for a while. But it's kind of like, okay, you know, you're in a toxic environment and you're doing what you need to do to help from internally, but you're still being exposed. So that's why he's got those symptoms. The hives, that's yeast, overgrowth, the, you know, the other symptoms that he's getting. I believe it's mold and yeast is what's going on with wow. him. 
So I've cleared it all out. Okay. I've switched up the leaky gut. And he's got a malabsorption issue going on with the food and minerals and vitamins and stuff that he's eating. Mm-hmm. So the good news is okay. it's fixable. It's fixable. I had yeah. it for the first 40 years of my life. And I don't have it now. I mean, I'm susceptible, so I, I don't go into a moldy environment. Yeah. But but I I am probably healthier now in my mid 60s than I was in my 20s. So it is it is fixable. Yeah, it's fixable. So I do, do you I do, do you, get it? Your home? Um, do you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just I had a hunch. I had a feeling. I don't know. Just just listening to your show, I just. Yeah. it dawned on me like hey I think maybe this is what's it <laughs> right right so, and and yeah. the EMFs make it worse okay it, I didn't even know about that issue so yeah electromagnetic frequencies we see that a lot with musicians mm-hmm. that are in recording studios or have them in their homes we see it with touring musicians because you know think of mm-hmm. everything we see it with People that are in the sports industry and other industries where they're in a truck, like a command central truck, and there's 50 computers and 50 screens, Mm -hmm. and it's hooked up to a satellite dish. All those guys that work in the sports Mm -hmm. industry to produce and broadcast shows. It's a huge problem in that industry as well. So there's a company called Leela Quantum, L-E-E-L-A Quantum. Mm-hmm. I think it's dot com. You may want to look them up because they have little devices too where I know there's a capsule that I know people carry in their pocket and it it helps negate EMFs. So that may be something okay. that we can do just during the day. But the electromagnetic frequencies, that's a big deal. Do you have an electric car? We don't. Okay. All right. I've seen studies on the electric cars where you think about you're sitting on a huge battery and you've got your GPS going and you've got your Bluetooth going Mm -hmm. and there's probably a satellite hookup if you got satellite radio and stuff. So lots of electromagnetic frequencies in there. And I've seen studies that show in the electric cars that blood can clot. So I think Mm. we want to be really careful with the electric cars. I think they've got more work to do on those because you think about you're just sitting on a huge battery and the, you know, Mm -hmm. EMFs that come off of that battery are significant. So something to think about too. I hope that helps. For sure. That's really helpful. Thank you. You are most welcome. Pay attention to those thoughts that come into your head because that's Mm -hmm. spirit communicating with you tell them it is fixable yeah. okay we might have to move <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, um yeah but that's great that's so helpful thank you you are most welcome you just look like a snow fairy with that backdrop no <laughs> so, so happy holidays and thanks so much for calling i hope he feels better you too thanks julie you bet Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Julie. How are you? Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays to you, my girl. Where are you? Tell everybody where you're located, please. I'm calling from Mishawaka, Indiana. All right. It's cold and cold here. <laughs> uh, well, it is just it is almost December, right? In, a, in about another, I don't know, twelve hours or so. Not even four hours. It's going to be December. So. Yeah. Wonderful. You got a question for me? Yes. Um, I would love it if you could scan my big sister, Jennifer. Uh, she's yeah. near and dear to my heart, and she's been having some medical challenges most most recently in the past couple of months. And she's in Niles, Michigan. What's going on we're with We're all her, big fans. Kimberly. Uh, well, um, the doctors are fearing that it could be Addison's disease. She mm-hmm. has, a, she wakes up with some severe bloody noses in the middle of the night, and she has bouts of severe, um, almost fainting, where her blood pressure is very, very severely low. 
Her name's Jennifer. Okay. The the bloody nose is a lot of time are mold. It's very common. Okay. If there's mold exposure that bloody noses can result. Do you know if there's a mold issue in her home? I don't think so, but you know that it could be it it it's been going on for quite some time. She even has procedures scheduled for December seventh to to cauterize. cauterize. Is that how you cauterize. say it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Cauterize. cauterize her nose because of that. But there's a more serious underlying where she gets so winded that she has to lie down and she gets these fainting spells mm-hmm. or dizziness when she stands up too quickly, and it's severely cutting into her ability to to have a livelihood and to just function. Mm-hmm. I'm getting mold, 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 mold is what I'm hearing. Wow. So that would be the first thing I would ask her. Is there a mold problem in okay. your home or does she have an office she goes to? Uh, no, not currently. Okay. But, but I'm okay. I'm, I'm wondering if, Maybe there that I maybe mean, she does help. She does. She's very super organized, and she does help a friend um, as, organize. And maybe that house has mold. Mm-hmm. Is I don't it know an old? If it's where is, she's staying. Yeah. Is it an older home? Do you know or? I don't know that, but I'm because it happens during the middle of the night, I'm not sure if it's where she's at currently or mm-hmm. where she visits to organize I, that home. So I'm I'm getting it's her home. Does she own it or is she renting okay. it? She's renting. Yeah, I'm getting it's her home where she is. So I would send her to moldymovie.com. M-O-L-D-Y movie.com. First of all, have her watch okay. that. It's free. And then I would have okay. her read a book or at least access a book called Toxic by Neil Nathan, MD. Neil okay. Nathan, MD. And he talks about mold as well. And there, there's a couple of podcasts out there. I don't know what the names are of them, but I read about them. And I've heard a couple of them where... It's really enlightening about what a problem mold is. And what you just heard me talking about with Emily, with her husband, Ryan, it's a percentage of the population that is super susceptible to mold issues, mold toxicity. It's not good for anybody, but there are those of us that our bodies just have trouble clearing out the toxins. But that those nosebleeds, that was a, that was the first thing that came into my head when you said she's having chronic nosebleeds is mold exposure. Okay, thank you so much. That's so helpful. You're most welcome. And I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Santa for the Angelica training, as you mentioned earlier in your show, and that that discount. So that's a great tip. So thank you so much for your help. Wonderful. Wonderful. All righty. Well, happy holidays to you. Thanks for calling in. Thank you, Julie. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All righty, everybody. That's it for this week. Fun, all fun questions. Call in next week with yours. And we'll see what spirit has to say. Sending you lots of love from sweet home, Alabama. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Julie on Instagram and YouTube at Ask Julie Ryan. And like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. To schedule an appointment or submit a question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com. This show is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be medical, psychological, financial, or legal advice. Please contact a licensed professional. The Ask Julie Ryan Show, Julie Ryan and all parties involved in producing, recording, and distributing it assume no responsibility for listeners' actions based on any information heard on this or any Ask Julie Ryan shows or podcasts.